Welcome to part 4 of the Scenario Project. In this episode we are going to map out the objectives. I will show you my initial thoughts on um, the different battle plans and start working on the plans themselves. There's a couple of things we can do um, in terms of objectives but uh, initially my thoughts are that um, I should concentrate within the village itself because that's the important thing for the narrative of the scenario it's the village that is important so let's just zoom in slightly we could if we wanted to just uh, paint one huge blob and say right that's it you got to take the whole village but it's not much fun for the player and it doesn't show a representation really of how well they've done within the scenario itself so what are we going to do now we could just do a an onion effect whereby we have the uh, say an outside of the village And then we could just keep going down and having smaller and smaller pieces. Can be effective, but we're not going to do that here. What I've decided to do is sectorize the village itself. Um, I'll probably change that a little bit later anyway. This, this is just more for place markers on the objectives. So I'm going to split the village into a northeast sector, northwest sector, southeast sector, and a southwest sector, plus the centre of the village, in particular the headquarters. I want the headquarters to be its own objective. I might have other buildings becoming objectives within the different sectors to give additional points, but uh, we will see. So objective one, and what I'm going to do, let's turn this down. is here now I'm going to occupy that's what I want known to both no known to player now I I don't know why it defaults to known to both but it would be nice if it was known to player which makes more default sense to me because if you give a commander um, his objectives you're not then going to send them off to the enemy and say these are the objectives I'm going for but still it's up to it's their decision to do it that way so now what I want to do is give the capture of the headquarters quite a large amount of points now what I will be doing is copying these objectives for the allies unfortunately there is no copy uh, facility within the editor to do this so I've got to manually do it myself so 400 points I think for the capture of the HQ I'm not going to give it an objective name because it's already got a landmark on it so objective 2 now we're going to start down here. I'm going to go up to the next one, and doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Again, known to player, and I think what I'm going to do um, is make these no 200 for now. Let's just leave it to 200. Let's just have a look at the show all. So, so we can see we've got uh, a fairly nice spacing. We've got the these buildings as well. 
on the outskirts here. I've not bothered with that um, destroyed building. I was wondering about whether to exclude that destroyed building as well, but I'm going to leave it like it is. Um, obviously, the I could actually start changing the map, but uh, I don't want to do that. But um, I think what we, we will do is have maybe these buildings as separate objectives. That'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I think what we'll do is we'll have these as an extra objective for now. So this is what it looks like at the moment. What we have here is a crude representation of the village. You've got the village here, the dry riverbed, and the setup zone for the axis powers. Now, I'm doing this to give you a visual idea of uh, the, the five crudish plans that I've come up with that I'm going to base the plans on. Again, they might change um, as I'm creating them. Um, also, through testing, I might find that uh, it'd be better to manoeuvre things a little bit differently. So it's very much playing it by ear at this stage, but this is just to have a, a basis. And as I said, I am using all five plans within the game. What I shall be doing is the plan one and plan two will in its initial phases be very similar. Plan 3 and Plan 4 again will be very similar in their initial phases. But in each case after that they will differ. They'll manoeuvre about halfway between the village and the setup zone for the first phase. And then for the second phase, we will have forces going to the left and right flank and a main force going in to take the village. So again, about halfway through, going to manoeuvre out and then the second phase be a case of centre will move into the outer edge of the village the left flank will manoeuvre here the right flank here and then they will both move in to the centre. This time there will be a rush to the edge of the village then establish a base of fire on the left flank the centre will advance into the village on the right we will sweep round and then into the village. Again coming out to the edge of the village but now it's a reverse of plan 3. So here we will establish a base of fire on this side and that might stretch over to the dry river bed um, this is just a, a crude representation. The centre, again, the left flank, base fire, and into the village itself. For plan 5, we are going to do something a little bit different again. We are going to go screaming out. left 
left and right flank and into the village itself and this will be just a basic zip out in every direction and that's it you're probably wondering to yourself we're meant to be doing plans why are we in the unit screen well at this stage um, if you've been following the videos and the um, order in which I've been doing things and you've forgotten to write down which units are in which groups now is the time to do it honestly it will save you um, a little bit of hassle the other reason why I'm in here is because on my um, crib sheet if you like of the um, squads and what groups they're in I've decided to uh, designate for the left flank center and right flank specific sections and it's going to go like this number one section will cover the left flank number two section will go up the middle number three section will be on the right flank number four section though I'm going to have this as a reinforcement now to make this into a reinforcement it's quite simple um, you are only allowed to have up to seven reinforcement units though and you designate reinforcements with the numbers on your keyboard between one and eight now you use eight to reset a reinforcement so for number four section we press number one and you can see it now comes up and says R1 and it's still got the group designation for the whole section now if I turn around later and say oh I didn't really want that I press number eight and it disappears but uh, we want this as a reinforcement so pressing one again so these are German forces and just to make it uh, a little bit more visually neater you can see I've set up number one section over here on the left flank here we've got number four section which will be the reinforcement and as you can see down below here not only do we have the group designation but with the reinforcement designation that goes for all the units Here we have the group HQ and the two vehicles. Then we've got number two section, which will be going up the center. And finally on the right flank, we've got number three section. I'm not going to show you the creation of every single plan with every single group and their all their orders that I'm going to do. Just to give you an idea, of how to do this I'm going to pick um, section number one and just show you the creation of the first phase of plan number one and as you know the first phase of plan number one is to reach a midpoint between the setup area and the village so for um, section one the eventual um, plan within plan one is to reach this forested area here to cover the left flank and so the midpoint is roughly about here and this is where we're going to what we're going to use as our visual representation of where we're going to move the units so let's just move in slightly make it a little bit clearer okay so first of all move to group two because group two is the HQ plus number one squad and I'm going to refer to all of them as groups from now on rather than their squad designations group two I'm going to do this in two steps now why I'm going to do this I shall show you in a little while so I'm going to 
add an order so order to and this order will say okay I want you to reach this position and I want them to get there as quickly as possible so I'm going to use the dash I'm not using the not the trigger option here order free again I'm going to change this to quick now but this is the um, going to have here as the final position of the HQ team plus number one squad group two right so let's go back as you can see we've now got these timing options and it is a little bit important to try and understand what these mean basically the exit between is the starting time and the AND is the end time so for setup what this means is start the next order destination between 0000 and 0100 so you've got to start the next order as soon as possible and you've got to complete it within one minute if possible it's possibly not not very clear like this but uh, if we go to order two again we've got a similar position here and as you can see by default it's picked up the one minute end time from the setup order and so this is now saying that um, from minute one you can exit to perform the next order and you've got to complete it by the second minute so what I could do here is actually change this to say 11 minutes and let's just increase this because that's nonsensical and bring that up to 15 minutes so what this now means is that it has to wait in this position until minute 11 of the scenario before it can attempt the next order and try and accomplish that for the next four minutes well, that's my understanding of it anyway let's bring that uh, down now I go back to set up here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have this set a, a high number for the moment As you can see for order three, it, you don't have those options because um, there's no order to go to. There's no order four. As soon as I create an order four, then I will get the options for the timings. How long to stay here and then how long to complete to the next order. Now, I, obviously, I'm giving you a very, very simplified description of all of this okay so let's continue now so this is the end of the first phase that uh, I've got for group number two and I'm going to make that a can trigger which I shall show you the reason for that this in a little, little while so now I'm going to move on to group number three and these guys I'm going to obviously again they're going to end up in the forest area but I'm going to put them over to the left hand side of the HQ I'm going to add two so this is going to be their end position as you can see I'm working backwards order two have them there have them run so let's do the trigger so let's just take that back to zero and then we shall okay so 
group number four. And I'm going to have these guys coming in on the right hand side of the HQ. So let's add our two orders. And so they're going to be here. Order two. Have them make it here. It's going to be a dash. I'm going to change the timings here. I have to be a little bit careful. Always throws me slightly. Okay. So that's group four and finally group five for um, number one section. And this is um, the squad with the light machine gun. So again, I'm going to add my two orders and I'm going to have them set up position here. For order three and then order two. going to come here okay so I've now done all the commands for the first platoon. Now you might be wondering to yourself, well, what was all that business with group number two, the HQ unit, and on order three can trigger? This is kind of a uh, friendly trigger. Now what I want to do for um, this side is to have one of the armoured cars to move up this side as well, but after the units have uh, moved in posi into position. So I'm going to pick on group 15 and this is um, the armoured car on the left hand side that I've set up and I'm going to add two manoeuvres I'm going to leave it at advance and I'm going to position it here and they're going to come back to order number two and I'm going to position it a little bit just behind and I'll leave that at advance as well now the reason why I've done this um, basically is that um, where it, whichever direction your troops have coming from, it's just like the any of the move options. Um, that's the direction they will face. So I've done this second position so that the armed car is actually pointing towards the east. Now we come back to setup. Let's just increase this. hit the wait for and as you can see we've got listed group 2 which is our HQ for the number one section order 3 now what should happen is that when the HQ unit reaches its destination the third order the armoured car will start to move. So I'll have a, a little look at that to see how that all of that pans out. As you can see, first platoon are now running forward. And the armoured car here is not moving at all.
So now they've all come up to the first position of uh, their order, order number two. See these guys are rushing off to complete their third order, and you can see now that uh, if we click on these guys, they are part of number two group moving forward, and the armored car has started to move because they are now performing order three, and this is triggered by group two starting order three, performing order three. And there you have it, it's the first part of the plan number one for number one platoon, number one section. Now just very quickly on um, testing the plans, pop up. Now to test one particular plan, you just switch it off to not used. It won't destroy the contents of the plan or anything, it just clicks it off, it just says nope, this isn't going to be used. So in that way you can, can actually um, test each of the plans. Now what I'm going to do is go away and spend some time creating the rest of plan 1 and plan 2, plan 3, plan 4 and plan 5. When I've done the initial phase of plan 1 I will actually show you how you can copy uh, the plan into plan 2 because as I mentioned earlier the first phase of plan 1 and plan 2 will be more or less the same the same goes for 3 and 4 it's all detailed down here but it's uh, nice just to show you so I've completed the first phase of plan 1 as you can see all three platoons are moving forward and I'm quite happy with that. Very quickly, one last thing is Group 14, and if you recall, Group 14 has been assigned to the whole of the 4th platoon, which is a reinforcement. Now just to show you how I am uh, got that to work in Plan 1, you can see Order 2, they will come and they were spread out in this position. For Order 3, slightly wider and slightly deeper. Order 4 moving into the middle of the village. Then Order 5 they will spread out. Now they will tend to as far as they can move into the, the buildings but you will find that some units will be outside. What we want to do is copy plan 1 as it stands at the moment into plan 2. Uh, so how do we do this? Well first of all let's prove that uh, it's not set up already. So if we go to plan 2 you can see we've got a not used marker but uh, let's have a look at group 15 and you can see there's nothing for it. Right. So group 15 on plan 1 you can see we've got uh, certain settings. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, it's all indicated down here. Well, Control c to copy and then Control v to paste. So we're on plan 1, so we do Control c to copy and then we go to plan 2 and we do Control v to paste. And here you can see it says copy AI plan. Plan 2 access will be replaced by a copy of plan 1 for the access. And it's done. So we can look here and it's all there. And that's it basically. So what I'm going to do is the laborious task now of doing the rest of the plan for plan 1 and plan 2.
And then move on to doing plan 3, plan 4, plan 5.